Hello everybody, good day Nigerians and uh, I come back to you today to talk about something that is going to be very sensational. This is going to give me a lot of troubles and a lot of enemies, okay? But I'm going to do it because I remember when I started to do my live broadcast and I, when I began to mention the names of the big men, the men, the so-called men of God who are responsible for the problem of the church in Nigeria, uh, the all hell broke loose. I mean, everybody started attacking me, calling me up and saying I shouldn't mention names. Nigerians don't like to, for the names of their big men to be mentioned or exposed. And even if what you are saying is truth, people still don't want you to mention the names of the big men or the culprits in the crimes and the evil that you are talking about. is People are generally uh, fond of mentioning government, just saying government or, you know, blaming everything on the government and leaders, but they don't want to mention who are these leaders. So today I come to you to talk to you about those who are really killing Nigerians. I want to mention the names of those who are killing Nigerians. So get ready. These are the names of those killing Nigerians. I'm going to give you their names. Now, why is that important? You remember I, I did a video a while ago when I spoke about the big man syndrome that is killing Nigeria. So big man syndrome, it's good to talk about big man syndrome, that is the big men. But who are these big men? Can we mention their names? Yes. I mean, I mean those are the documents. Those are the documented ones. And the names I will mention today who will just be less than 100 names. So they are just going to be the names of the main ones that we know that have been proven, that are documented. But there are so many others, like I told you the other time, that there are 500 super rich Nigerians that at least we can trace their wealth, that we know that they are super rich. Only 500 Nigerians and only 10,000 Nigerians are comfortable, are rich. Only 10,000 Nigerians have over 10,000, over $1,000. And they are the ones controlling the whole wealth. 10,000 Nigerians controlling, that's less than 1% of Nigerians. That's less than 0.1% of Nigerians who are controlling the whole commonwealth of our people. Why 200 million people are living on less than $2 a day? 10,000 Nigerians are having the whole wealth of Niger Delta, Southwest, South, South, Southeast, North, 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 North East, Northwest. The whole of the wealth of Nigeria is in the hands of 10,000 Nigerians. So these 10,000 Nigerians are holding Nigeria people hostile. And the way they do it is that they go and take loan from the banks or they go and take uh, government contracts and they, you know, just don't do the work or they just pocket the money. And, you know, we talk about Nigeria. When we go to Abuja or go to Banana Island or go to Ekoyi or Lekki, you see all these big houses? Well, who are the ones owning them? They are the same 10,000 people. And what we talk about big houses, beautiful houses in Nigeria. There are only 100,000 houses in the whole of Nigeria. Only 100,000 houses. Whereas there are million, 200 million people who are struggling to get a house or to live in a decent place in Nigeria. So these 10,000 people are holding the country hostile. It's a big man syndrome that is killing our country. But what are their names? Who are the people behind them? We only know the names of politicians and everybody is throwing... Yeah, but I'm not going to focus on politicians today. I'm only going to focus on the names of people who have taken the money of Nigeria and are not returning them. So those are the people that we want to talk about. And, and we need to challenge the government to begin to do something about this. And, um, you know, the cars, all the big cars that you see in Nigeria, how many cars are we talking about? Well, we talk about, oh, these big cars, flashy cars, but how many people have big cars in Nigeria? The, only, the whole population of Nigeria, we don't even have less than five, only less than 5% of Nigerians own a car. Less than 5% of Nigerians own a car. And the most cars that we have is, that 5% is even a lot, the same 10,000 people that are owning the cars and their relatives. Because 11 million cars for the whole of Nigeria is less than 5%. And that 11 million cars, is, some of them are, or is not just one by one per, per person. It is, uh, you know, it's, uh, some people own two, three, four cars. But go to America, go to England. If it's one car per family, every family has a car. At least maybe sometimes two cars. That is what we call advanced country because they have middle class. They are, they are level of living. At least they have middle class. The people can afford elementary stuff. But in Nigeria, no. Most people are living on less than $2. 
some are living on less than one dollar or just one dollar a day. So chocolate of a car, only that same 10,000 people, especially the 500 super rich, are controlling everything. And we, we always talk about Nigerians traveling abroad overseas. Oh, how many Nigerians travel overseas? How many Nigerians have been able to travel overseas? How many Nigerians have even seen an airport before? You want me to tell you? <laughs> Less than 20 million. You remember I spoke about the 20 million elite. That is the 10%. That's only 10% of Nigeria. That is the second category, the elite. And that elite, you know, I said less than 20 million, right? But really, only 15 million Nigerians have been abroad, have ever traveled abroad. 15 million. Only 15 million Nigerians are overseas. Only 10 million Nigerians are officially overseas. But only 15 million of them have ever traveled overseas. So that is less than 10% of Nigerian population. So what is then happening to our whole country? So do we, when we talk about Nigeria, are we only talking about 5%, five, 10% or 1%? So what happens to the 95% of Nigeria? Do we still call them Nigerians? They have been killed morally. They have been killed economically. They have been killed psychologically. And who are the people killing them? The big men. The big men they, that belong to that group of 500 people, that five, 10,000 people that are owning and controlling the whole thing, they are the people that are destroying the destiny of that country. We don't have Nigeria again. The people who are enjoying Nigeria, who own and possess everything that Nigeria has, are these elite, these top, super, privileged 10,000 Nigerians. And then a little number of them who are working and the elite who can speak English, who are doing as working as journalists and workers, and that just, everybody is less than 10%, less than 20 million of them. So we are in trouble. We don't have that, like the country. The people who are the Niger real Nigerians, the 95%, we just call them masses. The masses. They are just the population. They are just masses. But the masses, the masses like that have been reduced to masses. People who don't, I mean, 15 million of them don't even go to school. They don't have even basic primary education. 50% of Nigerians can't even read or write in English. Talk less, I mean, some of them cannot even read and write in their own local dialect. 50% of the whole of Nigeria. We don't have a country, guys. These top elite, these uh, big men, people, the big man syndrome has destroyed our country. We need to take the power and the economic power from this, you know, uh, short, I mean, small group of people and give it to empower the majority of our people. Now, let me tell you the story about this. Talking about the list, giving you, mentioning, the, I'm going to mention the list of people, do you know, a few people who are holding Nigeria into ransom, who are uh, taking the whole, who are, you know, controlling the whole economic destiny of Nigeria, put, taking, taking the money of the government, putting their pocket, and not paying the country back. So these people, I'm going to tell you their story, and these people are the ones I'm going to focus on, but they are not the only ones. If you want, you can do your research. You will find more names like this. But you see, they all, you will see that they are all that, that group of 10,000 top Nigerians. So there is this company that was started during the time of Obasanjo. It's called Amcom. Amcom is a country that is, it was a company that was supposed to propel Nigeria to become a developed an industrialized country. So, they, are so, so they, they put together the money that is coming from oil, that is coming from shares, they sold government properties and government entities and put together you know, this company and, and challenge and encourage Nigerians to come and buy the shares. So these, the few prominent Nigerians came and got, took loan and money from the banks and the government and you know, took the money from, that was gathered together for, to build that company. <laughs> and these people, they went and used the money to build their own companies, and they are not giving back the money to the country. Uh, to the, that, I mean, that's of that time, because the, the Naira, the rate of Naira was, you know, not 300 now. It was like maybe less than $100, yeah, or maybe $100 or so. So if at that time, the money that was taken from Nigeria, uh, from Nigerian people, from the Nigerian est estate, um, is 5.5, almost 6 trillion, 5.5 trillion naira. 
If you divide that by one, if the division something, now it is three, 350, so it's now it's like um, 20, 15 billion dollars, but that time it was like 30 billion dollars. That time it was like 30 billion dollars. But maybe actually more than 30 billion, maybe 40 or 45 billion dollars, if you're going to, depending on what exchange rate you are using. So can you imagine about 30 billion dollars, or let's say even say at the rate of today, 15 billion dollars is repeat this people took from the you know the the mass of the money of the country and they use it to do their own thing and never give it back to the country so the country cannot have electricity we cannot have road we cannot have hospitals the 200 million people are getting poorer and poorer again so let me go back to that uh 20 million i mean uh five trillion dollars i mean five trillion naira that i'm talking about so is only 20 I mean, this is not the old money from that Amcomo. you know it's i'm only talking about the 20 top debtors the 20 top nigerians who took the money only i'm only talk, focusing on the 20 20 is about 50 percent of those people who took so they are still uh the you know this is 65 percent of the money of that upcon that they took but they are still about another 40 percent of Nigerians that their names I'm not going to mention today. But these are the ones who are owing, because the amount of money they took from that AMCOM is equal to almost the whole budget. In fact, it was bigger than the budget of Nigeria as a whole. It is now during Buhari's time that the budget of Nigeria has become about close to $30 billion. But that time when they took that money, it was more than $30 billion. And then that, that, that time, even if, 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 even if, let's say our budget is 30 billion today, the money they took is more than our budget of today, the national budget of all, the whole country. That time our budget was about 10 billion, 20 billion, and they, see, that is what they did. They took the, 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 the budget, the, the old national wealth, common wealth of the whole country, and put it in their pocket. Building their own industry, building their own you know families, to putting money everywhere, and everybody is worshiping them, saying they are big men. But really, they are big men at your expense. So my question is, where is government in Nigeria? Where was the government of Obasanjo? Where was the government of uh, Jonathan? Where was the gov Where is government in Nigeria to control and charge these people to court? You know why they are not charging them to court? Why they are not imprisoning them? Because they are all rubbing one another's hands. The big men in Nigeria, they are not too many. They know one another. It's just that 10,000 clique of people that know one another. And the civil servants and the government officials there, you know, all about 12,000 put together. So they know one another. So now, let me thank God that Mr. Buhari, President Buhari, now has decided to do something about this. Let's hope that he will be able to challenge these people. But we, the citizens, have to shame them. We've got to mention their names so that everybody will know them. The biggest debtor to the Nigerian Commonwealth is a man called Ifai Uba. And Ifai Uba, is, he was even just, I think, he was recently... Uh, elected to become the Senate or Federal Government of Nigeria. <laughs> he was recently elected as Senator because they take this money from you, from the government of the country, from the bank, from Nigerian nation, and use it to buy you. They will use it to buy the people. People will be worshipping them, coming to sing for them. They're not knowing that it is at their estimates, and they will be giving you shaking change. And you will be voting for them so that they will take have political power. They are not, not just having an economic power in Nigeria. These people are having economic power and political power. So what? How much is Ifani Uber and its Capital Oil and Gas Industries Limited or in Nigeria? One hundred and fifteen billion, almost one hundred and sixteen billion. You calculate that how much that would be in dollars. This is not the only people is owing, you know. Is still owing other banks so that we are not even talking about. We are only focusing on the Amcom company, that, which is a government company, the one entity for the whole of Nigeria. So, 115 billion. Do you know how many schools that could build? Do you know how many roads that could repair? Do you know how many states don't even have that kind of money? Do you know how many destiny Nigerian lives could have been improved? Do you know how many hospitals could be built? Do you know how many pregnant women could be restored? That Ifai Uba is a big man. He's living large. And Nigerians are celebrating him. 
So you see, that is the problem with the big man syndrome in Nigeria. Most of these big men, they, they got their money by stealing from you. And we are, people who are rotting in Nigerian prisons are the petty, petty uh, thieves and armed robbers. But the big robbers of the nation, the big thieves, are living large. They are even in the corridors of power. Apart from uh, Ifai Uba, there is another person that we all know very well. Most Nigerians know him. And he also attempted to become the, uh, the governor of his own state. Because it was, uh, they, they would use that money they have stolen from us to buy political power. They buy, first of all, use it to buy the people, their allegiance of their poor people, so that if the government wants to do anything, their people will be saying, is it the only one stealing? They are, people will now begin to defend them. So this next, you say, if I Uber is an Igbo man. So the, for the Biafran people who say, oh, we want to leave Nigeria, is uh, Nigerians are making us poor. When you leave Nigeria, do you think that if I Uber will, be, will become a Yoruba man or a Usa man? He will still remain an Igbo man. And there are many of those if I Uber in Igbo land, I tell you that one. And they will remain there in Biafra. So it is not the geography or the name of the country that is the problem. It is not the division of the country that is the problem. It is not the restructuring of the country that is the problem. The problem is with our people, the big man syndrome, the, the value system that is broken down in our country. The next person that I want to mention that I said wanted to become a governor in, the, in his own state, is, we all know the name and it's one of the people celebrated in our country. We are celebrating criminals and his name is Jimo Ibrahim. Jimo Ibrahim is owing 59 billion, almost 60 billion naira. And he's not paying back. The problem is not even owing. People could take money to build their business, but pay back. But these people are not giving back the money. And, you know, Jimo Ibrahim is the, the owner of the company that is called Nikon Investments Limited. So, but, see, that is the problem. They are living large, and our people are living in penury. The third person is also a big lawyer. He's a son, and everybody knows him in the country. You know, he at least is a big, big lawyer in Nigeria. He's a son, or respected by the society. His name is Wale Baba Lakin. Wale Baba Lakin. He's a construction. These are the people who take contracts from the federal government and don't do the work. You remember the Lagos Ibadan Express Road? That, that, the, the, the contract was awarded to his company you know, so many, you know, for a long time ago, and that thing was not done during all the time that uh, Good Lord Jonathan was there. His company is called By Courtney Limited. And these are the big men. He is owing the federal, now our, our nation, our Commonwealth, 40 billion naira. 40 billion naira. While Libra are lacking. And these are people who are respected in the society. They are living large. And we cannot do anything about them. You see, these are the people who are supposed to be in prison. But because they are the sons, they have the lawyers, they have the connections, they have all the money to buy people, to buy government. Nobody can seem to do anything about them. The next person that we want to mention that is owing Nigeria big time is a family. It's a whole family. And the family is called Kuteyi. Kuteyi family. They have their mother who is dead now, Josephine Kuteyi, Josephine Damilola Kuteyi. They have Sahid Kuteyi. They have Ganeyu Kuteyi. It's, they are having a company that is called Jos Joseph Dam and Sons Limited. But they are owing Nigeria about 40 billion naira as well. 40 billion naira. They are not giving back. They are not paying back. Then you have this governor that, want, that now wants to become the president of Nigeria. Is it Donald, Donald Duke? Donald Duke, when he was the governor, that's the next person I want to mention. When he was the governor, uh, he built, he started a new, a, 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 a resort, a business empire that was called Tinapa Business Resort, Cross River. He was the governor of Cross River State. And he went and used, he didn't take the money in his own name to his credit, but he took the name in the name of the state. So the state now is in debt to the, gov to, the, to the people of Nigeria. And he that put Nigeria in debt when he was a governor to the tune of 36 billion naira 
He went in and he's living, at, he's living large right now. And he still wants to become the president of Nigeria. He's still going to campaign to become president. And some people are still vote, trying to vote for him. Or some people are still campaigning for him. So when he becomes the president of Nigeria, what, will he, what debt will he put Nigeria in? He will put Nigeria in the debt of... The, will Nigeria would have been sold out because he will be doing projects that he cannot finance. So that is uh, Tinapa Business Resort, 36 billion naira. The next person that is owing Nigeria big, and it's a company, but there are a group of people that are there. One of them is called Fumi Ademoson. Um, but they are partners and they are co-owners with Shuku Kadibia Ajaegbu. Shuku, Shuku Kadibia Ajaegbu and Fumi Ademoson, they own a company that is called Home Trust Savings. And that home trust savings, they are owing Nigeria 30 billion naira. 30 billion naira that, we are, we, that could have been used to improve the lives of our people and to change situation in, in the country and the educational system, the hospital situ situ situation and everything. Now, the next person that is owing Nigeria big time is somebody that I personally used to respect a lot. I used to respect this person a lot because... Uh, he was, he's a brilliant mind. He was in America. I mean, it's Professor Batum Naji and his wife, or his sister, or whatever, Naji Agatha. You know, they, you know they, they form a company that's called Geometric Power Limited. And, you know, Professor Batum Naji, and uh, he has a whole group of people with him there. Obi, Obi Buaru Eluma, Anike Paul, Nwobodo Benjamin, Shuku Emeka, Dozie uh, Shiji Oke, Akwe Austin, Naji Okeshuku, uh, uh, then you have another Uber Trustees Limited, Kumash Limited, Diamond Capital, and Financial Market Limited. All these people, they are all in Nigeria, the Nigerian Federation, to about, 20, about 30 billion naira. And they are living large, and they are the ones flying abroad, they are the ones sending their children to study overseas and things like that. Another person that is, uh, you know, that another group of people that are, is another group of people that are owing Nigeria almost at another 30 billion or 28 billion naira is the same group of uh, that son lawyer, Wale Babalaki and uh, Ogumadu John Alarakwe Ola, Olabode, Okalake Ndudi. You know, they have with this company, Rogue Gate Properties, they are owing Nigeria another 30 billion. Naira. Then we have another group of people that is, they call themselves uh, Shell, Development uh, Shell Development Petrol Company, West Multipurpose Cooperative Society Limited, Shell staff represented by Ipo, Ipom Wosa Ogiemuda. You know, they are owing Nigeria about 26 billion. So all this money, can you imagine all this money? is bigger than the budget of the Federal Republic of Nigeria at the time. Can you imagine what the, we, we are owing money, we are borrowing money off left and center, and our people are not giving back the money that could be used to develop the country. So these men, these are our friends that are calling for revolution now. This is the kind of revolution we need. It's not the political revolution that will bring disability. Let's bring revolution to the mindset of people, to the values of people, to the big man syndrome. It is this revolution that is needed, a revolution of, you know, making the elites become responsible, making the big men become responsible, making the big men not to steal, not to deprive the poor. The rev class revolution, that is the kind of revolution that is needed. Not the revol political revolution of just, you know, replacing one with the other. We have been replacing them all this while, since independence. What has that changed? It is the you know, revolution of the mindset, the value system. That is the revolution we need. Another group of people that are owing Nigeria 20, about 20, uh, over 20 billion naira are the Ayim family, Ayim, Ayim Osegwe Limited. Ayim Osegwe, Dorothy Shinyere, they are owing Nigeria 20 billion, over 20 billion naira. Then we have Richard and uh, you have Obire Richard and Francis Otushe. They are platinum capital. They are owing another 20 billion naira to Nigeria. You see, you see, all these are prominent Nigerians. They are not even politicians. We talk about politicians, but they are not even politicians. 
They are the big men in money. They are the 500 top rich Nigerians that we are talking about that, you know, that own everything. They are the ones who own houses in, uh, in England and London and uh, America and Dubai. These are the people that, uh, that are destroying our country. These are the real killers of the country. That's why all the headsmen and the kidnappers want to be like them because they are seeing how they are living large. The next group of people is a company that is called Flotsam Investment Limited, Obodem Ibru, uh, Tejiro Ibru. This is the Ibru family. We know them, we respect them, but you see, they are taking money from the government and they're not giving back. 20 billion, over 20 billion are in their hands. Another group of people that are also, you know, stealing and Taking, taking away the Commonwealth of Nigeria uh, is another group of people. They, another family is uh, EDC family. That is, uh, there is a certain chief EDC. I think he's dead now. And Margaret EDC, uh, Lone Star Drilling. They were also 20 billion naira. Then they are owing to the, to the government and they are not paying back. Another group of people like that are the Ugoji Egujo family in Petrologic Logistics Limited. They are owing about 20 billion also, 19 billion. You see, people are just taking Nigeria and tearing everything apart. They call it national cake or whatever they call it. They are going to take their own national cake. And that's why many people want to become uh, politicians, because they want to go and take their own national cake. Another group of people that are owing us, uh, that are not get, giving our money back, uh, is another family, the, the Namani, uh, Namami. Uh, Shimaroke, His Excellency, they call him, that is, he used to be in the government, Shimaroke uh, Namami, uh, Lona Global Resources, they are owing almost 19 billion naira to Nigeria and they are not giving back. Another group of people, this one, they call themselves Osana Properties Limited. Asana, I mean, like in the Bible, Osana, they are supposed to be Christians, right? Osana, Asana. They, are, they might be singing Asana, but a lot of Nigerians are not singing Asana. They are living, they are dying of poverty. They don't have water to drink. They, they, you know, they don't have uh, health care because of the money that this food took that would have given these people you know, good facilities, water, provision, and everything that they need to, to live. But Asana Properties Limited is owned by Onyonye Shika and O-B-E-K-S, I mean uh, C. They are owing 18 billion naira to Nigeria. Then another group of people like that, that uh, owing Nigeria is a whole group of people, they call themselves Minaj Holdings Limited. The people that are there are Ajegbo Mike, uh, Naye Lu Shudi, U, Shudi Hu Luk Shudi, Shidi, and Shidi Hu Logu Miller, Grigri, at Ridge Kyle, uh, Atue Yifo, Oladele Afolabi, Akwere Kisoto, Kokorisha Paul, all this, that group of people they are owing the country 17 billion naira that they are not getting, they get, taking, getting, you know, giving back to the people. Another group of people that are owing Nigeria money from that AMCOM, only the AMCOM, we still have other group of people owing Nigeria that I'm, I'm still going to talk about in brief, but these are just the main ones I will focus on today. They have another one they call AfriJet Airlines Limited, and the owner is Inoele, Inoele William Barry Carr Collin, and that they are owing 13 billion to the country and they are not paying back. They are not, the other group of people is uh, a company called Petroleum Brokers Limited. The owner is uh, Wilcox Awopu Olaga, Awopu Olaga. And they are owing 13 billion as well. They are also not paying back. <laughs> then you have uh, another company that is called Hotel The Island, uh, Kasmal Properties, Island Autos and uh, NAC Oil which is uh, somebody that we all know very well, Kashamu Prince Buruji. That Kashamu Prince uh, was a senator. He used the money to buy people. He's the one they are looking for in America. That they are, America is demanding that Nigeria would deport him and repatriate him back to America because he was a drug pusher or something. That he was being accused of pushing drugs. And he said he would not go. Instead of going to clear his name, he refused. He's from my state, this one. And he was, you know, he and people from that state were going to fight for him so that they would not, 
put him in jail so that they will not put him in jail and he's living big and people are worshiping him like god over there but he's owing nigeria 13 billion naira and he's not paying back and that same money using to buy the uh, loyalness i mean lo loyalty of uh, ordinary people and he was a senator to buy political position too but apart from this list of people that I've mentioned, right, they are a whole list of other Nigerians. Like I said, that 500 super rich Nigerians they, is because they have defrauded the nation, either through contracts or through defrauding the banks or through government uh, money or one way or the other. I'm not even mentioning politicians now. Let's leave those ones alone. But the other debtors that are holding Nigeria and killing Nigeria economically and no, mo, 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 uh, hold, uh, holding Nigeria hostile are debtors. You, you go and look for the list of debtors to, of the, these banks, of the major Nigerian banks. If you go and search for the debtors of major Nigerian banks, you will find the debtors of Intercontinental Bank, a whole list of major prominent Nigerians that are taking money from, that withdrew money from that Intercontinental Bank and they are not paying back. Then search for the names of the major debtors of Union Bank also. You will see the list of major Nigerians, prominent Nigerians, just like this one. They are taking money from the banks and, and they are not paying back. Then go to, and look for the major debtors of Afri Bank. You will see the list of another prominent list of Nigerians, sometimes the same people taking money from the, the, the banks. Because what happens is that when they withdraw the money from the bank, the government, the federal government will have to put that money back so that the banks will not collapse. And sometimes the banks collapse, but the people who put money there have lost the money and they, they, they become uh, impoverished for the rest of their lives. So look for the major debtors of Afri, Afri Bank as well. And look for the major debtors of uh, Oceanic Banks. The, and then look for the major debtors of FinBank. You will find the Nigerians that, have, that are holding the country hostile. These are the people that, are, you know, that have taken Nigeria and imprisoned Nigeria. And 200 million Nigerians are suffering as a result of these people. Uh, irresponsibility and lack of consciousness. So the revolution we need is the revolution against the elite. Is the revolution against the super rich? Is the revolution against um, the big man syndrome? And then we need the country and the president, Mohammed Buhari, and the next gov government that we are going to have to be responsible. To, and then we need to modify our judiciary so that they will be able to prosecute these people. They will not keep on buying lawyers and dragging the whole thing until they die. And you know, we, do, we will not be able to return the money. They will not be able to get return the money because they are using all kind of loopholes in our legal system. So we need the government to really take this serious and return the money. These are all more than the Abasha loot. We think Abasha is the bad one, but this one, nobody is talking about them. We are celebrating them. But they are even worse than Abasha because they are killing the country. These are the real killers of the country. Worse than headsmen and worse than kidnappers, these are the real killers of Nigeria. I submit my case. For the love of God, church and nation, peace.